everyone. It's my first video for the year 2021. 2020, goodbye and good riddance. So with it being a new year, it's a chance for all of us to start over and try some big and new exciting things. And if you ask me, 2021 is going to be awesome. If you're a time traveler watching this video, 2021 was better than 2020, right? I mean, it's got to be better than that apocalyptic nightmare that we just lived through. I mean, I don't think I can handle another year like 2020, so it's got to be better, right? Right? Today's doll is based off of another Greek mythology character, Medusa. Like the harpy, I feel like Medusa falls into that list of monsters who were tragically misunderstood. There are two origin stories with how Medusa came to be. The first is that she was born a nasty, ugly creature with two sisters named the Gorgons. The second was that she was actually born human and a really beautiful human at that. She was so beautiful that, well, I'll try to keep this PG, but she was assaulted by Poseidon in one of Athena's temples. This angered Athena so much that she cursed Medusa into the monster that we know today. The snake hair and eyesight that turns anybody that looks her in the eye to stone. What the heck, Athena? I love you, but really? I'll be basing my Medusa doll on the second origin story, where a beauty was turned into a beast. Eventually, she was beheaded by the hero Perseus. And fun fact, when she was beheaded, she gave birth to Pegasus out of her throat. I, I don't think that's how that works. Medusa was one of the first doll concepts that I thought of when I was originally thinking about making this channel. So I'm really excited that I can finally post this doll remake for you guys. So with that, enough talking, let's get started. By chance, I got the perfect doll for our makeover today, Viperine Gorgon. I got her in a lot of secondhand Monster High dolls I bought recently. I was so happy when I pulled her out of the box. She's a Gorgon, so she obviously has the Medusa qualities I'm looking for. A serpentine face shape and a lovely scale covered body. Using her is a no-brainer for this project. To prep her head for hair plug removal, I'm dunking her head in this steaming hot water for a couple of minutes. In true Medusa style, we're going to remove her head. Now for the gross but oddly satisfying part of the prep. I'm coming in with my forcep tool and pulling out her old hair plugs. Making her bald will give me the surface I need for the snakes. Here's our bald beauty. And you know, I really do like her factory face. She has these cute forehead scales and somehow they made her snake eyes look sweet. But I'm going to be an agent of chaos and melt her face off using fingernail polish remover that has acetone in it. Sorry, Viperine. Next in the prep, we'll be sanding the glossy layer of her skin. But before that, I wanted to mention that for this stage, I wear a respirator. I also wear it when I'm spraying Mr. Super Clear Sealant outside, and even when I'm using my pastels. When bad chemicals or dusty particles are floating about, it's important to protect those sweet little lungs of yours. Okay, now that my PSA is over, I'm sanding my doll so that my paint and pigment will adhere to her body easier. Here she is without her factory paint. Looking at her more closely, you can see that the artist that designed her face mold gave her a very flat nose bridge to make her look more reptilian. 
I'm personally getting more Lord Voldemort vibes, so I'm going to make her a more realistic nose out of epoxy sculpt, which I will do off camera so I can see better while I make it, because it's going to be teeny tiny. And here is her new nose. And at this stage, I'm taking a periwinkle color and painting her whole head with it. This way, the off-colored clay of her nose will be able to match the other colors of her face. After painting everything purple, I gave her head two coats of white. Here, I'm giving her the first layer of base skin tone using soft pastels. I'm a fan of using the brand Pan Pastels for this step. Their pigments go on really smoothly and they have great coverage. Jumping forward, I've given her a couple more layers of base skin tone and I've started to contour her face with darker burnt sienna tints. Now it's time to actually start to define areas of her face using darker tints of soft pastels and to push the contouring even more. Before I add even more details, I'm adding freckles using an old toothbrush and watered down acrylic paint. This adds realistic dimension to the skin. I'm happy with what I've blocked in with pastels, so the next thing I'm going to do is start blocking in finer details using my watercolor pencils. I'm working in layers, and after sealing each layer with Mr. Super Clear, I come in and push details more with darker pencils. Her eyelids and eyelid creases are ready to define, and I'm also going to start working on her blue eyes. I'm bouncing back to soft pastels to bring in pinks for blushing. I love this part because it really breathes life into the doll. The blush looks a little crazy at this stage, but it will start to tone down as I keep working on the face and spraying with layers of Mr. Super Clear sealant. And speaking of crazy looking, I'm now coming in with paint on her irises. I'm sort of modeling the paint here so that it looks like it has multiple tones. But for now, she just has the crazy eyes. Off camera, I've given her gold eyeshadow and started applying her eyeliner. Now, I'm using acrylic paint to make a base for her eyebrows, which will be nice and bushy, which I just adore. Now that the paint has dried and was sealed with Mr. Super Clear, I can now use watercolor pencils to draw on her eyebrow hair. This layer is all about using white acrylic paint to make things pop. I'm going to use it on areas like her catch lights and scleras to make them look like they're coming forward. I'm also going to start using it to contour her nose.
Here, I'm applying it as a highlighter to her cheeks and forehead. When it comes to painting, it always involves a lot of back and forth when applying it. At first, it might be too strong and you have to buff it out a little. And then it's too soft and you've got to come back in and apply more. And then once you do that, you've got to soften it a little bit more. And then once you do that, you have to add a little bit more. You get the idea. But eventually, if you keep working at it, you'll get it to be where it's just right. Now I'm giving her eyes little starburst lines. Between these and the catch lights, her eyes are now starting to look sultry and less like she's a sleep paralysis demon. Now to just add some texture lines to her lips and her face up will be complete. For her body, I'm using the same undertones that I used for her face up. I decided to give her cool purple undertones because I want her snakes to be a cool shade of green. Since the snakes are supposed to be part of her body, using cool tones throughout her repaint will make everything look harmonious and like it all belongs on one person. Like on her face, I've added a base skin tone, and now I'm adding darker shades of brown to the creases and shady areas of her body. For the blushing, I've chosen this cool-toned, intense pink. This particular pink will look really good with her green snakes, and it will also give her skin a human but supernatural appearance. Does anyone else love green and pink together as much as I do? To top off the supernatural look even more, I'm adding a gold shimmer to her scales. You can really see the multi-tonal quality of her skin coming through, with the subtle purple undertones coming through the base skin tones, topped with that really intense pink. Instead of doing a hair reroute for this doll, I'm giving her a hairstyle that's made out of snakes. I found these stretchy plastic snakes online and they seem like they're the perfect size for her hair. They're also giving me very odd cravings for gummy worms. Their bright pastel colors don't work for this project, so I'm going to have to paint them, starting with a base coat of white. I wasn't really sure what kind of paint to use on this kind of plastic, so I just used what I had on hand, which happened to be acrylic paints. I fully expect it to crack in places as I start putting them on, but I should be able to touch them up later. Now for the draping of the snakes. I'm trying to figure out how I want to start placing the snakes before I start gluing them on. Adding the snakes will be an interesting practice because I want them to lay in a way that will read as styled curly hair, but also as living, moving snakes.
And as I suspected, the paint is starting to crack as I move the snakes around. And in case you're wondering, I chose to paint the snakes before placing them on her head as a way to kind of reduce the chance of accidentally smudging her face with paint while I painted the snakes. Here's her snaky hairdo after I've finished gluing them and giving them some slight paint touch-ups. <laughs> I don't want her snakes to be a flat green color, so I'm going to start dabbing on a cool yellow tone to add some dimension to their snaky skin. Next, I want to give her snakes a little face up. I imagine that Medusa adores her snakes, so I want to treat them right. I'm going to paint little eyes on them with catch lights so they can look as sweet as possible. I thought about giving them little blush circles on their cheeks, but that seemed like it might be a little too much. And now I'm going to add some pattern and more color variation to them to make them more lifelike. And now it's time to make her an outfit. I can't have her walking around in her birthday suit forever. Well, maybe I could. It was ancient Greece after all. Nah, I'm gonna make her an outfit. And today I'm making her a Doric style peplos, which was a common way to wear a toga in ancient Greece. This style of toga uses a rectangle of fabric that is first folded at the top then folded down one side and pinned at the shoulders. It's also a great style to use when you're a level one sewing newbie like I am. A lot of togas have decorations around the border of the fabric. For her toga, I've chosen the classic Greek key pattern and cut it into heat transfer vinyl using my Cricut cutter. After I figure out the alignment, I'm going to use an iron to heat up the vinyl, which will adhere it to the fabric. Typically, ancient togas were made using a linen fabric, and that's what I've used for mine. The only issue is that my toga was designed for doll scale, which means that this fabric is super stiff and lays really straight. I want the fabric to look more natural. I want it to have folds and I want it to accentuate her body shape, like real clothes would. To get the look that I want, I'm first going to wrap her in plastic wrap, and then, taking Elmer's glue, I'm going to mold the fabric to her body. Here's her toga after the glue has dried. To accentuate her waist more, I'm adding some gold cording, which will act as a sash. Now I'm going to make her a pair of sandals. On a piece of scrap fabric, I've traced a shoe pattern that I scaled down to fit her feet. Using super glue, I'm going to glue the two parts of the pattern together and then trim off the excess fabric. Now 
To make the straps of her sandals, I'm gonna use some more of my gold cording and wrap it around to look like it's part of her shoe. I haven't used super glue in a really long time and I forgot how awkward I am with it. The glue is sticking to my fingers and it's starting to peel off some of her paint. I'll have to do some touch-ups to her legs and feet later. Next, I'm going to glue them on so that they conform with the arch of her feet. Monster High dolls have these really high arches and usually I would give her a pair of high heels, but I didn't really think heels worked with our doll. So I'm going to do it this way so they don't look like they're just falling off of her feet. Traditionally, ornate pins are used to keep the toga in place at the shoulders. Off camera, I sewed my toga shut here, but I do want to add that special touch using some of my nail art charms. Now that her toga is complete, I can attach her head back to her body. And here she is, our little Medusa. I'm really proud of how she turned out, and making her taught me a lot of important lessons about the materials I used. I don't know if I'll ever have to use plastic snakes again in the future, but if I do, I have a lot of practice under my belt now. Since it's the new year, I have a couple of resolutions for things I want to learn and improve on in 2021. I want to keep working on my sewing skills, of course, but I also want to learn more about embroidery and sculpting for some of the big projects I have in mind. How about you? What do you want to learn and improve on in 2021? Let me know in the comments. And while you're down there writing your comment, if you haven't already done so, please go ahead and like this video and subscribe to my channel. I've got a lot of ideas and projects that I want to share with you this year, and I would love to be able to continue to learn and grow with you. Have a happy new year, and I'll see you soon with another doll makeover. Bye!